If imitation is the sincerest form of flattery, what does that make parody? Not all games aim to be the biggest or the best, to push technology or storytelling to new heights, or even chase the latest trends. Some games just want to be silly. Any game, trope or genre, or any piece of art, once popular enough, opens itself up to parody, and as gamers we just love it when we find a cheeky reference or easter egg poking fun at something we love. Even better if it's an entire game doing the lampooning. Spoofs, satires, sand-ups, whatever you prefer to call them, exist in that strange space between mockery and admiration. It's a fine line to tread, with the worst coming across as little more than spiteful digs, and the best showing a real understanding and reverence for the source material, making fun like a good-natured, if a little childish, best friend. The following games may not be the best to play, but they are masters of the satire. I'm Ben from Triple Jump, and here are the 10 silliest parody video games. Number 10. Retro City Rampage do you miss the era when games were blocky and the third dimension was nothing but a wild pipe dream? Do you think gamers have it too good with their ray tracing and their analog movement? Then Retro City Rampage might just be the game for you. Inspired by the original top-down Grand Theft Auto games, Retro City Rampage gives players complete freedom to explore its open-world city of Theftropolis, hijack various vehicles, collect dozens of unique weapons, and generally cause mayhem. While the gameplay is primarily of the top-down shooter variety, expect to hop down sewer pipes for some Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles esque side-scrolling, or on a bike to deliver papers a la Paperboy. If all the retro references weren't enough, its story is chock-a-block with plots, characters, and scenes ripped straight from the very best of 80s cinema. Playing as a gun for hire on the run, players run headlong into a Bill & Ted-inspired time-travelling phone booth and are flung into the distant future where they'll meet Doc Chock, read Back to the Future's Doc Brown, complete with DeLorean, who believes them to be some sort of time hero. And things only get stranger from there. Just make sure to fix that phone booth before Bill and Ted needs it. Party on dudes! Number 9. Typing of the Dead – Overkill Edutainment is not a word that conjures up images of fun and well-made gameplay experiences. Usually, rushed or low-budget affairs, these games fall down in both the education and entertainment departments. That being said, back in the 80s there was a boom in edutainment touch-typing games, which saw children the world over splatting aliens by spelling words correctly. Developers Modern Dream clearly felt nostalgic for that simpler time when they created Typing of the Dead Overkill, a bizarre spin-off of the House of the Dead series, which sees players typing words as quickly as their fingers can manage to blast zombies in the head. Only instead of normal phrases or year six spelling words, they'll have to type things like edible meat skewer, vacuous human, and red rum, a little more colourful than the phrases included in the kid-friendly games it apes, perhaps. These words are generated randomly to keep things interesting, but if players wanted to, say, brush up on their Shakespeare, they could always download the DLC. These extra packs include phrases lifted from films, songs, and yes, even the great bard himself. Either that, or buy the filth DLC and enjoy typing swears and insults too crude for YouTube. What fun. Number 8. Kid Dracula the Castlevania games are classics. They introduced gamers to vampire-slaying clan the Belmonts, taught us the true nature of man, and helped to kick off an entire genre. But they're also rather tricky, not to mention dark. If only there was a game that took everything we love about Castlevania and flipped it upside down! Oh wait, there is! Doing away with the melodramatic doom and gloom in favour of cartoon fun, Kid Dracula is a Super Mario-esque inversion of the Castlevania script. The gameplay is similar in the sense that players still throw weapons at enemies to damage them and jump to avoid their attacks, but differs wildly in terms of look, feel, and the fact that one boss is the Statue of Liberty who challenges them to a quiz instead of a fight. Instead of hunting vampires, players step into the boots of Kid Dracula, the mischievous white-haired son of the big bad Count himself. Armed with his father's magical cape, he sets out into the world to defeat Gallimoth. In this sense, it wouldn't be a stretch to say the game shares elements of its plot with Symphony of the Night. It would be a big stretch, but the similarities are there. Only in this game, death is your friend and doesn't steal all your stuff, so that's nice. Number 7. Conker's Bad Fur Day Back in the late 90s, family-friendly collector-thons and colourful mascot platformers were all the rage. You couldn't throw a stone without hitting a Mario or a Crash or a Bubsy. This, coupled with the fact developers Rare had already made two Banjo-Kazooie games and two Donkey Kong Country games, meant it should have come as no surprise that they were sick and tired of cute and colourful. While Conker's Bad Fur Day may have started life as an inoffensive, child-friendly platformer, it didn't take long before the developers decided to flip the entire thing on its head, where once the eponymous Conker was content 
content with exploring his forest and collecting acorns, he very quickly slipped into a life of guns, drinking and debauchery. And thus, Bad Fur Day was born. Taking control of Conquer as he goes from dozy drunk to king of all the land, players are in for a heck of a wild ride through this parody of early 3D action platformers. Conquer is clearly a film buff, as there are plenty of subtle and not-so-subtle references to A Clockwork Orange, Apocalypse Now, and The Matrix to name but a few. Not content with lampooning films, Conquer also makes fun of the game's industry, repeatedly mocking the developers for lazy missions and not bug-testing the game properly. How dare they. Number 6. Surgeon Simulator Fastidiously accurate simulation games have never been chart-topping bestsellers, but they've always found their audience. However, since the early 2010s, there has been a slow but steady rise in their popularity, with games like Microsoft Flight Simulator and Farming Simulator doing especially well. But with the rise in popularity also came the rise of spoofs and parody games. Surgeon Simulator, or Surgeon Simulator 2013 if you want to get original title about this, was one of the first and one of the best. Now, that's not to say it's one of the best games games ever, it received middling reviews mainly criticising its fiddly controls and lack of variety, but it certainly nailed what it set out to do. And that was create anything but an accurate simulation of performing surgery. The fiddly controls certainly helped in that regard, with different buttons controlling each individual finger on the surgeon's hand, as even picking up a scalpel was an exercise in patience and anger management and saw most operations ending in more harm done than good. But hey, as long as the old heart was removed and the new one plopped in somewhere, it counted as a roaring success. Can I request a second opinion? No? All right, maybe I don't need a transplant after all. Number five, Jazz Punk. Like spies? Like the gadgets, fast cars, and expensive suits? Want to be suave and sophisticated like James Bond? Then maybe don't play Jazz Punk. This comedy game is a send-up for old 50s-style spy films and TV shows, both silly and serious, and is more than happy to tear apart and ridicule the real-life absurdities of spycraft from that era. Originally intended to be a serious spy game, with some light-hearted gags thrown in to break the tension, developers Necrophone Games loved the comedy angle so much they reworked the entire game to suit it. Set during an alternate reality, Cold War in the fictional Japanada, the player controls Polly Blank, a spy who arrives at headquarters after being mailed there in a human-shaped suitcase. From there, they are given increasingly bizarre and nonsensical missions from the top spy. These include poisoning a cowboy to steal his artificial kidney, blasting messenger pigeons with magnets, and much, much weirder things than that. When it isn't mocking spies, Jazzpunk is referencing The Shining, tasking players with helping a frog cross a busy road like in Frogger, and generally being as strange and off the wall as it possibly can without falling apart. At some point, you might even get around to doing a little spying. Number 4. Goat Simulator Surgeon Simulator might have been one of the first simulation parodies, but it certainly wasn't the last. Or the weirdest. That honour belongs to Goat Simulator, the logical extreme of all simulation games. Players hoping for an ultra-realistic day-in-the-life-of-a-goat experience, eating grass, chomping tin cans, scaring children with those weird oblong eyes, you know, that sort of thing, will be severely disappointed, however, as this game has about as much in common with reality as Fortnite does with real warfare. Taking control of a janky goat with a ridiculously strong stretchy tongue, players are let loose in a small sandbox town and are given free reign to do whatever they want. While this may start out simply and innocently enough, headbutting random civilians or ruining family barbecues for example, it quickly descends into the ludicrous with players tearing through the sky with an out-of-control jetpack or becoming a demonic queen. Utilising a scoring system similar to the Tony Hawk's Pro Skater series, the game keeps track of every silly thing players accomplish and pushes them to do even sillier things with the promise of more points. Funnily enough, Goat Simulator started life as a joke, but when its alpha footage garnered more than a million views on YouTube in two days, the devs knew they had a hit on their hands. Or hooves. Number 3. Hatto Full Boyfriend the dating sim may be one of, if not, the most parodied genres out there. And it's easy to see why. The idea of a solitary male protagonist surrounded by dozens of scantily clad women all willing to throw themselves at him comes off as kind of icky wish fulfilment. It's much more fun if one of those girls is a worryingly sentient serial killer like in Doki Doki Literature Club, or if the player was trying to win the heart of a fast food mascot like in I Love You Colonel Sanders. But Hatterful Boyfriend has them all beat due to the fact that the player is desperately trying to land a date 
with a pigeon. Yes, in this game, players take on the role of a teenage girl, the only human ever invited to study at the prestigious bird-only school St. Pigeonations. The story is delivered in a visual novel style, with the player's decisions altering the course of events and ultimately deciding which of the eight lovely birds they end up with. If that doesn't sound weird enough for you, there is a surprisingly deep backstory to uncover which explains why the world has been overrun by sentient pigeons. A backstory which involves global pandemics, wars, terrorist attacks, and more. Hopefully not a prediction of things to come. Number 2. South Park The Stick of Truth South Park can be a bit of a mixed bag, especially when it comes to video games. Their earlier attempts at breaking into interactive entertainment were, shall we say, less than stellar, so it was a surprise to everyone and a cause for celebration when South Park The Stick of Truth was not only a brilliant adaptation of the TV show, but incredibly fun to play as well. Like its source material, The Stick of Truth is filled with gags, jokes, and absurdist commentary, but takes full advantage of its new medium by putting you, the player, at the heart of it all. Taking on the role of the new kid, players join Cartman, Butters, Stan, Princess Kenny, and the rest of the show's eclectic cast as they dress up as wizards and knights and embark on an epic fantasy quest. While it plays like a standard RPG, it also delights in parodying the genre. Canada exists solely in 16-bit form, like the RPGs of old. Special attacks cost power points or PP, and magic has been replaced by farts. And that's just the start of a game that isn't afraid to send up everything from video game and fantasy tropes to aliens, corrupt politicians, and more, and one that's not afraid to stray so far away from good taste that many countries were forced to censor it. Spoil sports. Number 1. The Stanley Parable the Stanley Parable is, without a doubt, the ultimate parody game. With its omnipresent, omniscient narrator commenting on literally everything the player decides to do, including standing around in a broom closet for minutes on end, the game is just one big comment on player involvement and the illusion of free will, as well as being one big joke at the player's expense. It's like the would-you-kindly scene from Bioshock taken to the extreme. Decide to blindly and unquestioningly follow the guidance of the narrator, then you just proved the point that gamers are all mindless slaves trained to do as they are told without a second thought. Choose to break free and make your own path. Well, as the narrator has already thought of every outcome, did you really choose this, or was the choice already decided for you? No matter how players engage with this gem of a game, they will always find some new critique on games, gamers, free will, life, and the nature of all things. For such a silly and comedic game, it's surprisingly deep. Taking the satire one step further, it even rewards players for not playing it for five whole years. 10 years in the Super Deluxe version. That means the game even anticipated you ignoring it. Spooky.